My vegan kind snack box arrived. And it's good this month, I'm quite happy with that. Look, vegan crusted creams, basically. Truffle bites, vegan, this will be nice. Because Vigo bars are delicious, and this is like a chocolate spread from it. Organic laundry soap nuts. And then, I can use this pouch. I'll give it a wash, I imagine, but I can use this pouch then for when I'm shopping and I want to, you know, not buy stuff in plastic. I'm watching PewDiePie play Catherine. It's actually quite an interesting game because it's like, yes. uh, there's a lot of it to do with morality. All right, hi guys, Dane and Biggie here, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. This is like number 12 or 13. These have been doing well, haven't they, Biggs? God, you just look just like a black lump. There he is. Anyway, it is Monday. My sleeping pattern is still kind of screwed, unfortunately. I've got my vegan kind box, that's over there. I probably already showed you that. Uh, yeah, sleep's still screwed, but I'm doing all right. In terms of reading, I have 20 pages left of uh, In Cold Blood, so I will finish that this evening. Actually, I'm quite enjoying it. I might knock it up to a four out of five, we'll see. I finished reading The Road to Rangoon by Lucy Crookshank, so I will do like a more in-depth review on this for my uh, indie read-along video. So Lucy Crookshanks is Lucy from Book Axe. This is her second book, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I don't know if I enjoyed it as much as the first one. I liked the characters of the first one and the plot of the second one, so I think if we could have pulled those together, I would have been in my element, but... Uh, I really like the setting, it's all set in Burma in the 1980s and um, you know you can tell Lucy has a passion for the country, I think she did a really good job of kind of capturing that, enjoyed the book, don't know whether it's going to stick with me for any great length of time but it was you know it was full professional release and whatnot. I, I think I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5 uh, based on enjoyment alone so and I do think there are definitely other people who would enjoy this more than me however I still thought it was all right to good, I suppose. And now, I'm reading a graphic novel. It's been a little while. I'm reading El Defo by C.C. Bell. Uh, it's very cute, but also kind of sad. It's about a, a little girl with hearing loss and she has to wear these big sort of headphones. Damn girl needs to be more assertive though. I'm, at the moment, I'm at this point where she has this friend who is just a sort of bossy know-it-all. And I can't stand this friend and I haven't figured out why she hasn't told us to go and do one. I guess it's because, you know, she's a bit timid because of her. She has to wear her uh, earbud things, as you can see from the title there. Those are her, her earbuds. So she feels kind of self-conscious about that. So I think that's maybe why I think she doesn't uh, doesn't feel comfortable and doesn't think she'd be able to make new friends. But damn it, she needs to be more assertive. That said, I'm enjoying it. It's a nice little graphic novel. I'm not surprised it's blurbed by, uh, what's her name? Um, R.J. Palacio, the author of Wonder. It's that kind of book. If you enjoyed Wonder, you're going to enjoy El Defo. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's, it's on a part. It's, we're, yeah, it's probably going for a 3.5 or a 4 again at this point. And uh, that's it, really, for my reading. So I'm going to love you and leave you and get me some more work. This game, teams have to match the and he is keeping a stenographic journal of his travels abroad. Much mourning, or with Biggie. Day, he would, I believe, be adopted by the town. Tomorrow we'll see the funeral, and so we'll end this one more Hello. mystery of the sea. Mina Murray's journal. Eight. Weeks. What's she doing, Biggie? Lucy was very restless all night. And I said, okay, you know, I was obese. I made these, these are uh, candied nuts. Look, okay, there's a bit of, what's that? A bit of almond, I think that's a mixture of almond and pecan. There's a biggie down there. It's six o'clock in the morning and the biggie is having a clean. Aren't you biggie? Yeah. I'm watching Ret Sapuri. They're doing. They're playing Sonic 06. I will do a, a reading update in a bit once Becca's awake. I'm about to go and make a vegan BLT, hopefully. Super fast. we making sure I don't fall off the sea do. So it's awesome. Here we go. Fake BLT. Out of all the because you're a professional. And Devin Supertramp. 
Hello! God, my beard is getting long. Look at that, that's like, it comes out here. Oh my God. Okay, so I think last time I updated you, I told you I'd finished reading The uh, Road to Rangoon by Lucy Crookshanks. So uh, I'm not gonna wrap that up anymore. It was fine, I've, I've written my review of it on Goodreads if you wanna check it out. Okay, then I read El Defo by CC Bell. I was disappointed by this. I've heard a lot of good things about this. My main problem was that I didn't like the main character and I feel bad because the point is is that she's like severely, severely hearing impaired. She has to wear uh, the thing that's on the cover, her hearing her hearing aid or whatever. But the problem is, is she's so unassertive that it drove me mental. Like, all the way through. For example, you know, she'd be at a sleepover and her friends would put a film on and she can't hear the film. And so, instead of telling them, she just gets really mad about it and then starts thinking like, oh, well maybe they did it to spite me. And it's like, no, you haven't told them that, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't know, I, I get I get the need to have like inclusivity and diversity and all that kind of stuff. And I, you know, I do think books like this should exist. Uh, but, my goodness. There were also some bits that were never fully explained. Like, there was one of the characters who always speaks very loudly and clearly to her. And she's like, it doesn't help. She's just talking loudly and slowly and it doesn't help. And so that's why she stops hanging out with this character. And it's like, well, A, you never said anything to this character about that. And B, what if she's got a speech impediment? And you, oh, so I, I don't know. I did, I just, I couldn't, I did not like the character in it. And so for that, that kind of ruined it for me. I gave it, I would give it like a three out of five. Uh, I wouldn't go out of your way for this one, honestly. It's blurred by one, uh, RJ Palacio, who wrote Wonder. And Wonder's okay. Wonder's like maybe a four star or something. But even that, that isn't that good. And both of these two books kind of super hyped on BookTube. And I think it's just because they deal with people with disabilities and, you know, they are aimed at a younger market or whatever. It's fine if you want to, if you want to teach a kid, you know, an eight year old kid about what being deaf means maybe give him this book but I don't know when I was a kid I would have just talked to somebody <laughs> I don't know so now I'm reading Paper Towns by John Green and uh, I'm having a similar problem here in that the main character the main dude Quentin Jacobson is a massive pushover and then Margot Roth Spiegelman is basically, uh, to, to borrow a phrase from Wayne's World, she's a psycho hose beast. So, like, they've literally... She, her her boy, The character's boyfriend or whatever has had sex with her best friend, which obviously isn't ideal. So now she's carrying out this, like, psycho revenge, where they, for example, they've just, like, taken a photo of this dude running along a street with his boxes up on and his, like, dick hanging out and stuff. And I'm like... Two wrongs don't make a right, mate. So now I dread to think what they're going to get up to in the rest of this book. It's also very John Green. You can instantly recognise it's John Green's style, which I suppose is a good thing. I'm not the biggest fan of his. Uh, so far in, I'm about 40 pages in, and this is my least favourite John Green book. And I've read... This will be my fourth. So... There's that. But um, I'm going to keep reading it. It's not, it's not like DNF-able or anything. It's probably on par for another 3 at the moment, maybe a 3.5, it could get up to a 4 if it rescues it, but I've almost finished In Cold Blood actually, and that's gone up to a 4 for me, even though it did take ages for me to read it. Uh, one last final thing I want to mention, that, because uh, I just saw, because I just went like this or whatever, and I've got my vegetarian V, so I've booked in to get this touched up, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but uh, basically there's a little bit of it missing, I got it done just before going to Glastonbury, and uh, like part of it rubbed off or whatever, where, where they gave me the wristband, I think. So I'm getting that touched up. I have already checked and the tattoo ink is vegan as well because a lot of uh, tattoo inks have like animal bones and you know, that kind of stuff in. So um, but yeah, that's all sorted and I'm getting that done on the 20th. And today is the 11th, September the 11th. Bit of a sad day really, isn't it? But um, yeah, so I'm getting that done on the 20th and I'm also getting another tattoo while I'm there, which is probably gonna be either like on my bicep or on my arm here it's hard to point because I'm holding my camera with this hand 
but um more writing so i have some writing on this arm here uh more writing and it's going to be a quote from frank herbert from june fear is the mind killer now i'm not the biggest frank herbert or june fan i actually only read it for the first time earlier this year after dnfing it as a kid but um i've watched the movie a few times i used to play some games my dad was a fan but really it's the fear is the mind killer it's actually called uh the f is it what is it it's the fear uh Litany, that's it, the fear litany. Uh, and it goes, for those of you who are curious, it goes, I must not fear, fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total oblivion. I will face my fear. I will permit it to wash over me and pass through me. And when the fear has passed, I will turn the inner light to look at its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. So that's the fear litany. And for me, it's, it's a bookish tattoo. And I don't have any bookish tattoos. I've got a music tattoo, vegan tattoo, but no bookish tattoo. But also it's uh, referenced like my anxiety disorder. And uh, for me actually memorizing the quote, I've only done it recently, but it's coming in super useful in stressful situations or anxious situations. And I just repeat the fear litany and it uh, takes my mind off things. So good one to get, I think. I will show you that obviously once it's done. And uh, the last thing to mention is I've been up all night. I don't know if I said that. It's now 10 to 8 in the morning. I've been up all night. Uh, yesterday, and well the last few days I've woken up at like 4.30 p.m. after going to bed at 6 a.m. So I'm just thinking I'm just gonna stay up as long as I can today and try and reset my sleep. I know I've tried to do that before, but I've got good vibes about it at the moment. Um, I've got a few options to use as well. So I'm going to start wearing my face mask and uh, can't use earplugs because I get ear infections and Becca snores unfortunately. So we need to, we need to figure something out there. Alright, I'm off. Peace. Really long update today. This is eight and a half minutes. Look his leg right up. Yes! Isn't you big? Yeah! Hey, Kat, you know you're licking up vegan mayo, don't you? He's like, that is gross. There is no egg in that. No animal products. All right, I'm about to take you to Despera Road, which is the the worst part of Wickham, or one of the worst parts of Wickham. Hey, Biggie. He's got his dreamies there. Here's my stack of bedside books, look. So here's in cold blood. And I've got that little tiny bit of it left to go. And... Uh, Actually, because I didn't sleep last night, if I had gone to bed last night, this would have been the book I read. Essential Penguins, there's some good books here. Brighton Rock, Graham Greene. Animal Farm, George Orwell. Breakfast at Tiffany's, well I suppose you would put that in here, wouldn't you? The Great Gatsby, On the Road, Clockwork Orange. What are the odds of that? Hi mate. Cheers, thank you. Who is this? This is for me. Hey, I know what this is. This is my tie-dye kit. And I'm going to try and tie-dye. Where's my white hoodie gone? I'm going to try and tie-dye this white hoodie. But I don't remember how to do tie-dye. Add water, yeah. Apply dye. Wrap. Are you going to help me, Biggie? Are you going to help me do the tie-dye? This is eventful, isn't it, Biggie? All right. So anyway, I'm going to finish off In Cold Blood. Then I'm going to finish off uh, Fanatics and Fools by Ariana Huffington, which I'm about halfway through. I was doing 25 pages a night of this, and this was my bedside book until I switched out for uh, In Cold Blood. But uh, this is signed as well to Andrew. I don't know who that is. I think I bought it used online. And then after that, I'm gonna have a Jack Kerouac, Big Sir, as my bedside book. Um, I love Jack Kerouac, and so I'm really looking forward to reading this, but I think it'll be a good bedside book, because if you look, a lot of it is just like dense text. And now Biggie is sitting on that. That's a cajon, by the way. So, let's <laughs> scare the shit out of him. Here we go, let's see what happens. It's a percussive instrument, Biggie. All right, let's go to Desper Avenue anyway. Desper Avenue is, is not good. I live just around the corner from it. In fact, 
It is that that road down there. You see those shops at the end. That is Desper Road. That road down there, where where proper cut barbers is, all along there, and it's where all the like prostitutes and the drug dealers and like all the alcoholics and everyone they all go and hang out down there. But it is currently 11:40 a.m. So I think. I might even be safe to take my camera down there while I go to the cash point. And that's the direction we have to walk into town as well. Basically, we live in a really fucking shitty area. Honestly, it's, it, we are in the worst part of town. <laughs> it's good for writing, though. I feel like I haven't, uh, haven't shown you this. Does anyone want a house tour? I could maybe do a house tour. It's, it's still a bit shit, though, but I don't know. Maybe next time uh, Becca and I have like a spring clean, I'll do a house tour. This is the porch. These are my herbs. I'm trying to get my shoes on. I can't get my shoes on. He's biggie through there. He's judging me. So I've attempted to tie-dye a hoodie. That's why I have dye on my hands. It's over in the uh, in the kitchen at the moment. I have to give it to about 8 p.m. Uh, about eight hours, four to eight hours it said, but I'm gonna give it eight. It said leave it for longer for the best results, or like for the brightest results, and I want it to be quite bright. But it's, uh, I mean, it might have worked. I guess we'll go find out. He's just jumped off up there after his toy. Biggie, why do you keep chewing my books? What are you doing? Oh, I got dizzy again from standing up. I don't even know if this is filming. What the fuck just happened? It is 3 p.m., 10 past three. Becca is home from work, because she, she's working a long day, so they've given her a couple of hours off in the middle of the day. I have not really been working, because I've done my day's work. I'm kind of head, ahead with stuff, so that's good. Uh, I've been doing a lot of booktube filming, so I've just filmed another bookshelf tour. I did uh, my indie review of uh, The Road to Rangoon for Todd and Danes. Indie read along, did that earlier. Little haul, did the Briggs book tag. It's all coming together. Uh, I have a lot of, this is tie dye stuff. It, sh it should be, give, give it about five hours and I should be able to take the tie dye out and see if it worked. Uh, I'm knackered because I've been in front of the camera now for like 40 minutes or something and the lights are on. So uh, I'm going to go and drink some squash and continue with my day. I may have called it like book cleanse or who knows. Like I think that they're like kind of... Um, I'm going to link to this below because I've been watching... This is Mara from Books Like Whoa. This is her... Uh, what is it? Under the influence of booktube book tag. Oh my god, it's getting meta now. It's getting meta now. Okay, I'm gonna try and explain this. I have had several beers, so this may be difficult. So she was just talking in the video about uh, one of the questions was like, you know, have you ever been inspired to do a video uh, after seeing somebody else doing one? And she was saying, well, I think it just happens naturally. She was talking about how, for example, she's filmed unhauls, and with an unhaul, it's something that she naturally did. It's the same with me before I joined, you know, BookTube, before I started watching. I always got rid of books and donated them to charity shops, but I didn't necessarily call it an unhaul. I didn't make a video about it, you know, so all these little things all, uh, all influence what we do on BookTube. Oh yeah, the actual reason I picked up the camera is because I have these smooth vanilla creams. Which I guess are like custard creams. But I get excited about books and I want to read them when they come out and all that kind of stuff. So like, Damn, that looks that really good. Some pressure. I'm going in. in. That same vein, um, I also Watch Mara while I eat. Now, and again, I think that creates a pressure in terms of like, if I ask for an My art, God. I want to make sure that I do a review of it because I just feel like that's the right thing to do. Um, so that creates some pressure because I am so much... Okay, so Becca's working late this evening, and I'm hungry, so I've made a big thing of mac and cheese. Here is the LA Beast. 
Okay, so it is Wednesday. Uh, yesterday I slept for like, it didn't work basically, my plan to reset my sleep. I went to bed at like 1am, then woke up at like 2pm this afternoon. So, so that happened. I'm still reading uh, Paper Towns down here. I'm about halfway through. Um, not particularly enjoying it. It's probably going for three at the moment. It's, it's the, my least favourite John Green book. You can definitely tell it is John Green though. His writing style is kind of coming across. But I just really don't like the characters in it. The plot has the potential to be interesting, but now that I've read um, Turtles All The Way Down, the plot of that and the plot of this kind of seem almost similar to me. They're both about this arbitrary treasure hunt that someone has to go on. Quentin's convinced that Margot is dead and that she killed herself. And I don't know why. That's just what I think, just what his mind went to and now he can't stop thinking maybe that's the case. But I'm just like, why do, I don't know, it just, I don't know. I haven't seen any evidence for, for that yet, but whatever. I, I don't know, I don't really get the, yeah. It's fine, I'll finish reading it. I mean, I am whizzing through it, so there's that. I'm just not particularly enjoying it. Uh, I did finish reading, though, my bedtime book, In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. Now, despite the fact that this took me a long time to read and I had to read it in little chunks of 20 pages or so, I did really enjoy it. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. The main problem for me was the first 80 or so pages, the first part of it where it's setting the scene. It was just a bit long and tedious, but after the actual, you know, the crime happened and we start investigating the crime in this book, it kept me, it kept my attention and I kept, you know, reading it. So, um, yeah, it's a good one to read, but I would read it, you know, a little bit each evening like I did, I think, rather than trying to read it cover to cover, because then I think you wouldn't enjoy it. And uh, I think it probably helps that I didn't have to study it or anything like that. I'm just picking it up because I'm interested. So, yeah, I'm going to finish off reading uh, Paper Towns. And then next up I have, oh, I'm going to try and read The Rats by James Herbert, which uh, my mum gave me a copy of. My dad actually watched the movie once when I was about nine, and I had a hamster, and the hamster broke out of his cage and was, like, on his shoulder, like, equivalent to, like, here, where he was sitting, and he just turned around and was like, whoa. So um, I want to see if the novel is creepy and then maybe catch the movie afterwards. And then I've started using this... Thing. My sort of ongoing TBR. So we have James Herbert is tucked right against the side there. We have Graham Greene, the little steamroller, kids book. That EUPL book is uh, like nine prize winning authors from Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Cressida Cowell, How to Cheat a Dragon's Curse. So that's my current like TBR, what I'm planning on reading probably for the rest of this week. And then next week will be cookbooks and some, that is what I mean when I mean squash. I don't know what you call it in America. Cordial, I think. But that, anyway. Come on, internet. Jesus Christ, I've been trying to fix this thing. You may notice that one of my monitors that used to be there has gone. Yeah, it, it stopped working. So I took the monitor down and restarted my computer. And when I did that, somehow it stopped the internet from working. We have really crappy internet here. We're watching some Arnold Schwarzenegger film, one of his new ones. And Becca's hiding behind a blanket. She's not feeling very well, but luckily I have created an amazing dinner. Look at this. We have a pizza tart with a side of vegetables, roasted vegetables, a bit of rosemary. It's got like potatoes, carrots, leeks, parsnips, uh, green beans. Oh, and a bit of onion as well. And then there's the pizza. I made hummus. It's pesto hummus, basically. Don't be fooled by this, or the jalapenos on the lid. It is hummus. I'm gonna eat it with these. What are you doing? What's that face for? Are you coming to attack? I don't understand. I'm gonna take a photo of you now. <laughs> He's annoyed because I just opened his cupboard and I got this out instead of getting to, instead of getting food out. But I think he's happy now. Look, Are you killing it, Biggie? You're gonna kill it. Ba 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 ba. He's fast. Do 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 do. Mm. 
It is dark. Again, uh, talk about books and thanks for changing your time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to happen next time as well, isn't it? So oh, is it? My holiday. Oh, oh yes, of course. <laughs> that's a major scheduling issue. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. So I got a big old stack of books to to okay. go through today. I'll, I'll probably start with um, this one's actually a reread for me. It's a it's a classic. It's what I usually say is my favourite classic, mm -hmm. and that is uh, Dracula by Bram Stoker. It's very aesthetically pleasing. He's a perfect circle, like a donut. Look at him. Look at him being a donut. That's what I mean. If you if you need help with anything, you know you can always come to. Who sleeps like that? Kisses. Also, I'm watching PewDiePie and Cinnamon Toast Ken play Dungeons and Dragons. But largely just watching the cat sleep. I have made baked French onion soup and we're listening to Dracula. Look at these two down here. It is very blurry. There we go. Alright, I better serve up dinner because otherwise Becca will be too hungry to feed Biggie and then there'll be real problems. Here we go, the end result. Let's go serve it to Becca. Go, I got a cool new keyboard to do my writing with no. and apparently Biggie is misbehaving. What's she doing to you Biggie? Come and sit here, come and sit with me. Look at my food. Hello, okay it is Friday night, uh, Beck is in bed but I'm doing my a quick update because I don't think I've shot one for a couple of days. Um, I finished reading The Fault in Our... No, not The Fault in Our... <laughs> finished reading Paper Towns. It was okay. I gave it a 3 out of 5. Um, you know, there were good bits and there were bad bits. I didn't like Margot as a character. The plot was a little bit boring and... I don't know. Just sort of... It was too American and alien for me as well. Like, the, all these kids, they wouldn't even legally be able to drive here in the UK and stuff. And I don't know. And um, then there was all this thing about maybe Mar Margot had committed suicide, which... I don't know where that came from, I obviously wasn't paying enough attention, but then she hadn't, and I was like, well, I didn't think she had, I didn't see any suggestions that she had. I mean, she was too much of a narcissist to commit suicide, to be honest. It was fine, I'm glad I've ticked it off. It's probably the worst John Green book I've read so far, and I've read like four. It's made me not really look forward to the final two, which are his story in Let It Snow, which I really don't care about, and Will Grayson, Will Grayson, which... I'm not particularly bothered about. So, I don't know, bit of a disappointment that one, but at least we finished the buddy read. And now I am reading The Rats by James Herbert. My uh, mum gave this this copy of this to me actually. I'm about halfway through, I'm really enjoying it. It's, um, I mean it's ridiculous, but it's good. It's very like pulp horror. It actually reminds me a bit of No Rest for the Wicked, my first book, uh, in terms of the way it's written. And also the focus is very much on the rats, like the characters in it really only exist to die. One of them had his uh, genitals ripped off, I think, by these like huge dog-sized rats. I've started switching to this new to-do program as well, called uh, Wonderlist. So here is my to-do. And so, for example, in Booktube, I have my publishing schedule, my list of read-alongs, what I actually need to do, and my list of things to edit. I've done all my editing. I'm up to date. Film. Actually, here we go. We can tick vlog off. Film vlog. Lovely. Right, I've still got to do my reading routine. Least favourite things about Booktube. Brownie. Let me chop it. He's come to sit with me, haven't you, Biggs? Just having a nice sit. It's four o'clock in the morning, I don't know whether I'm going to go to sleep or not. Biggie, that's my, it's my journal. It's my journal. This was sent to me by Minx Laura, this. Are you going to, hold my hand. Good boy. 
Thank you. Love you. What are you doing? Can I get your belly? Let me get your belly. I got it. I got it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, 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 I'll let go now. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Okay, I'll stop now. No, no. Ow. <laughs> We're watching all of the fatalities on Mortal Kombat. Half four in the morning. Look at what this young man is doing. <laughs> He's so adorable. People sometimes ask me how I ever get anything done while he's there. Do 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 do. Yeah? You're just gonna cuddle my hand like that. Yeah? Is that alright? Okay, good. Oh. Uh, no, no. I did not say you could do that. Yeah. Okay, alright, I'm off then, I'm off, I'm off. You're sitting on a parcel I need to send to somebody. And we're listening to Dracula again. He did not, however, betray him with you. When Mrs. Harker came in to see me this afternoon, she wasn't the same. It was like tea after the teapot had been watered. Here we all moved, but no one said a word. He went on, I didn't know that she was here. Yeah. Biggie, what are you doing? Biggie, what are you doing? Are you typing? That's what I'll do. That's, you, you just... Stop it. You're ruining the work. It's homemade brown sauce. And then, so I'm making some pizza dough. Because why the hell not? There we go, vegan pizzas, about to go in the oven, and their stuffed crust, lovely. Yum, 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 yum. Hello, okay, I'm gonna give you a good uh, quick update. I have, to all intents and purposes, finished The Rats by James Herbert, I'm actually as you can see, that's how far off I am. Uh, I've, I've actually, I've got the epilogue to read. In fact, let's do a mini time lapse as I finish reading the book, shall we? You can follow me eyes. Ready? Here we go. Dun dun. Okay, so I finished. That was pretty good. The ending of it was fairly predictable in terms of... Uh, I don't know, it's a standard like horror movie ending of where just when you think the, the rats have gone away they come back again. I mean in this book it happens three times. Uh, so the rats show up, they think they've dealt with the rats, the rats go away. Happens again, happens again, ends, and then in the epilogue we realise actually they didn't get all the rats after all. So I mean that was fairly predictable in itself. I mean it is quite a pulpy horror novel. It's not the, the most well written book ever. The characterization is pretty poor, I would say. The characters almost don't matter, they're almost irrelevant. However, the writing in terms of the rats, very well done. Just some of like the blood and the gore and stuff. Like, let me read this right from the end that there. There's a bit where the rats bit somebody's balls off. Uh, here we go, he hits the rat, he goes, um, He lunged forward and the sightless creature tried to back away, but its gluttony and reliance on its subject creatures defeated it. It was too heavy, it was too old, it was too helpless. The body popped like a huge balloon filled with dark red blood. Harris became drenched in the thick, sticky fluid, but he hacked away at the pulsating flesh in a rage he'd never felt before. I mean, that kind of tells you what the writing style is like. It actually reminds me of No Rest for the Wicked, which is my first book, which I think I said already. It still does, even at the end. All in all, though, I enjoyed it. If you're a horror fan, it's definitely one you should read. I would definitely read more James Herbert now. And, uh, yeah, it was good.
thank you to Mama Cobain for giving this to me. So next up, I'm going to really quickly read The Little Steamroller, which is a Graham Greene book. And then I'm going to read uh, EUPL, which is basically prize-winning literature from the European Union, specifically from Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, the three Baltic countries. So this is a book I picked up at London Book Fair while I was doing all the stuff with uh, Latvia and whatnot. And I'm pretty looking forward to, to starting it. So I'm going to go and read that in a bit. Becca's working for another hour or so this evening. Uh, oh, I finished uh, the audiobook of Dracula as well. We finished listening to that, so I'll be filming a review of that soon. That was for the re-readathon. And uh, yeah. I'm tired as well. I only had like four hours sleep, but it's good because it meant I then got up at like noon and then I had like an hour app, an hour nap earlier. But uh, yeah, I'll probably sleep okay tonight, I think. Hopefully, we'll see. All right, see you in a bit. I made homemade mango chutney in a vegan age jar. Let's have a look. Still a bit hot, but well, that's going to be lovely with some poppadoms. I made roast garlic hummus. Let's try from this angle as well. 